guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're interested in vocal technique, pick up my ebook called Becoming a Natural Singer. Or if you want one-on-one -on -one help, drop me an email or book a lesson directly through my website links in the description. So I did a video back in January, I think. I'll, uh, I'll put it up in the in the notification there at the top. And it was about uh, a trip to hospital that I took because I had an allergic reaction, lots of, uh, lots of swelling on my body. And they gave me a steroid injection to bring the swelling or inflammation down. And what I'd found was, is that all the inflammation had been taken off my voice, which at the time was kind of a revelation. And I put it down to, ah, these allergies must be impacting my voice. Typically when the voice is inflamed, for most people, it's a technical issue. And so the fix is technical. And I always push this, take responsibility. You're hurting yourself, figure it out. But what I found at that moment was, well, maybe it is technique, but maybe it's these allergies. I wasn't really completely sure, but I was excited because I felt like that was the first time I got to a baseline of what would my voice feel like without any inflammation. Now, unfortunately for me, because I started singing as an adult, I actually believe now that I've had chronic inflammation in my voice since day one. And I've never actually had a reference point for what it feels like to sing on a thin voice that isn't inflamed at all. My voice hovers somewhere between about 50 and 80% of what it should be capable of most of the time. And it's taken me an eternity to realize that because I had no baseline because my baseline was already inflamed from the, from the get-go that steroid injection changed everything for me because I realized ah what I thought was good voice you know oh my voice feels good today is not what most people feel like when they say their voice is good and also moreover when most people talk about their voice not feeling great for them that is a lot more than minority of the time most of the time their voice feels pretty good whereas for me I'd get two or three days a month maybe where my voice would feel like reasonably usable that those would be those 80 percent days all the other time it would feel inflamed stiff hard to use and I've been going around in circles for the last three three or four months to figure out well so Let's flesh out the rest of that story. After I after I had that made that video and I had this kind of two week to three week period of having a really thin voice where I was like, oh my God, it's the same every day. Oh my God, this is so much easier than I thought to sing and to build confidence without my voice having this constant swelling. So I had this three week period, but gradually it started to flicker away from me. I lost it. I started to feel more inflammation coming up and down and eventually over the last probably three to four weeks it's just been at the bottom stiff every day thick every day inflamed every day no matter what I do I'm like what is going on I've adjusted my diet massively since I had to go to hospital thinking ah it must be these allergies well it may be contributing why I had that inflammation on that particular day, I don't know at the moment. But because of coronavirus, I've not been able to get an allergy test. But what I found out is this, is that the problem is this thing called silent reflux that I've basically always had and not known about. Over the last week, I've readjusted my diet again. I've angled up my bed. I've got... Uh, not eating after like nine o'clock at night, eight o'clock at night. I've got a very alkaline diet, nothing acidic, very simple diet, basically alkaline fruits, soup, goes straight through my stomach. And uh, my voice is starting to feel super flexible and like it did in that three week window I had where there was no inflammation. Now, the silent part of the reflux is this, is that I very rarely feel I'm being sick up into my throat. Sometimes I do wake up with heartburn, but it's not particularly frequent. But what I've found and what I'm discovering is 
essentially there's this acid that comes up when you burp or when you just in your day-to-day -day life I think it's called uh, peptin pepsin something like that and that gas is acidic which it, it's it's coming out your stomach so it is acidic but if your body gets overwhelmed with this gas there's too much acid in the throat from this vapor coming through you get the inflammation and it's gone like a light switch again I can feel my voice coming back I can feel the stretch coming back I can feel the consistency I can feel the just sense of ah it's so easy to use my voice so I'm trying to recover from this. I did a few shows recently, live streaming, and they were going kind of okay. And then I had one show where I was just like, I can't do this anymore. This is not working. There is something fundamentally broken with what I'm doing here. And unfortunately, part of my value system has been working against me because I've been for years, anytime there's a problem, my, always, my, my default is always to go, it's my fault, it's technique. I've got to get better at what I'm doing. And that is generally true most of the time when people have inflammation on the voice, which is why it's key. But it's not always true all of the time. Sometimes the voice is inflamed because we're using it in the wrong way. Other times it can be inflamed because of acid in the esophagus, vapor coming up, acid as in a liquid coming up as well for some people. It overwhelms the larynx. It gets too acidic in there, it starts to get inflamed. As soon as those vocal cords are inflamed, they won't close as well, they won't stretch as well, they, they get stiff. You're back in that 50-80 zone where you feel like, man, why is singing harder for me than everyone else? Now, it's I've always had this, but in the last six months to a year, really, I had a period of a, two or three months last year in the summer where it wasn't as bad, but what I've noticed is it's progressively getting worse and I've been thinking, man, am I getting old? I must. It must be because I'm getting older, you know, my voice is just not as flexible as it used to be. And I've been kind of rationalizing it away like that. But what I've realized, I was, I was watching uh, the wonderful Brett Manning do uh, one of his podcasts recently, just, just thinning out super high like nothing. And I mean, this guy's like 15 years older than I am. I'm like, okay, if he can thin out like that, consistently then it's nothing to do with my age now when I sing actually my voice starts to gradually you know if I vocalize all day if I'm singing and using my voice a lot my voice tends to thin out which is why I kind of realized it can't be technique because whenever I'm using my voice it starts to feel generally better but if I'm not using my voice it tends to get worse the 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 healthy use of the mechanism where it's being uh, massaged, so to speak, by healthy technique will gradually thin out and help the voice to start becoming more flexible again. But it's not going to completely fix a deeper underlying issue of silent reflux. Now, why am I making this video? It's really just to highlight this battle and this confusion between what are the problems that we are dealing with as singers? And to kind of put a message out there to people that there can be a combination of things happening and you may not necessarily have a baseline. For you, your normal may be inflamed, may be thick, may be stiff. See, children have none of this because they're so healthy and they're so young that they almost will overcome anything for a certain period of time. So most people, when they're kids and they learn to sing, they learn from that zero baseline. And they have a, quite a few years where they're at that baseline and they get a good sense of what your voice should feel like when it is quite, quite normal. That's the issue is for people learning as adults, if they haven't had that baseline, they won't know what a, a voice that is not inflamed feels like. So that can set up a whole set of complex problems that the young learning singer won't have because they've got that reference point. And when you learn in that environment, what happens is you're much more likely to, to, to cover 
problems. You're much more likely to push through issues. You're much, much more likely to have problems with the learning process itself. And here's why. When the voice has a large amount of variance every day, as in some days it feels more flexible, other days it feels more stiff, and there's a big broad range in terms of what it's going to feel like day to day, and even on your best days you still have to work hard. What you're creating there is, is an environment where the muscle memory is constantly having to move around. So on those thick days you're having to work a lot harder, on those thinner days you have to work less hard. But that's not how it should be. When the voice is at that baseline with no inflammation, the muscle memory is largely consistent. Now you may and you will have some sickness here and there, you get a cold, you get a flu every now and again. It may be that you know you have a particularly, uh, you, you eat something that's not agreeable once in a while when, once you've, you've got to a kind of diet that works at that baseline and your voice gets a bit refluxy, it thick, thickens up for a week or two. But this should be in the minority of situations. This should be something that happens here and there. It should not be your normal. And for me, it was your normal. Now, when you've got all that variance, you're constantly in this state of feeling like you, you know, you're on uncert, you're on wobbly ground all the time. You're like, you, you put your foot forward. You're like, okay, I need to be certain that this is going to hold me, and you're not sure. And that uncertainty, no matter how much you work at the technique breeds hesitation. Now my sense is that most struggling singers have some combination of technical issues, i.e. the stuff I talk about all the time. Not enough separation between stretch and connection, or pitch and closure, however you want to describe it. But underneath that they may also have problems with this large variance because of chronic voice inflammation. But here's the thing, people tend to lean one way or the other. And I'm just trying to get my bearings in terms of which is which. We have to go after the technique first, because even if you've got a perfect bass line and a thin voice consistently, if you don't have separation between pitch and closure, you're not going to be able to do what you want to do. If you don't have a stable larynx, you're not going to be able to do what you're going to do. Now, it's partly and largely a testament, A, to Brett's amazing information that he's put out for years, and the, the singing success method in general, and speech level singing, Seth Riggs, all those guys that paved the way for really understanding technique on a deeper level. What is actually going on? is a testament to that information that I've managed to get through those years. We're talking about 15 years of learning on a broken voice. It's a testament to that method that I haven't hurt myself because most people in my situation would have at this point. If you're spending a decade working at those ideas, perfecting your craft, really honing your skill set, but underneath that you've got a fundamentally compromised mechanism, it's like you know, trying to learn on a really cheap guitar, you're only going to get so far. So we have to bring together these concepts. We have to really understand that we need both a voice that has a healthy bass line. It is flexible, loose and free most of the time. There's no inflammation there. And we have to combine that with the knowledge and the skills. For most people, fixing the health stuff is not too difficult. We're talking about diet, we're talking about exercise, we're talking about losing weight, we're talking about that stuff generally. The technical stuff, depending on where you're at, can take years. Now if you ask me, would it have taken me less time had I've had a healthy baseline from day one? I would say yes, more than likely, but would I have mastered technique to the degree I have? I would say possibly not. One of the strengths that I'm going to have moving forward if I can fix this problem is that I've had to build confidence on shaky ground and I've had to really push myself to the limits to try and commit to things on a busted voice, on a broken voice, on a voice that's like, oh, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? Whilst watching other singers who just seem to like every time nail it, nail it, nail it. Why is that? Well, that strength will pay dividends later on. If I can sort this problem, I tell you, singing 
on on the baseline <laughs> without any inflammation <laughs> to me is like in my brain it's like completely the most a mind blowing you you watch that original video i did you can tell i'm like uh what the hell's going on b it's like so easy compared to what i'm used to that i can't really put it into words and all of a sudden the whole world of singing makes sense to me now the whole world of singing makes more sense to me where i'm like ah okay <laughs> that's why it's so easy for them it's not just their technique it's not just my technique that's the issue i've had inflammation and because of that it's like ah some weight off my shoulders you can't really i can't really put into words how in a sense how positive this situation is right now for me because it's been really getting me down i felt like there's something intrinsically wrong with me that i can't figure this out in certain certain at certain times like why is it so much harder for me it must be technique i need to improve yes the last year and a half the stuff i've been working on is weaknesses that i've had technically absolute weaknesses that i needed to improve on but i didn't know about this i didn't know that i had a broken instrument i didn't know i was singing at my best only 80 percent of the mechanism and the beauty of it is that stuff is stuff that i don't have to blame myself for it's not a, it's not a, it's not a, a failing in my skills it's not a failing in in what i'm able to do it's just i happen to suffer from reflux i happen to suffer with silent reflux that i didn't know about that was creating a harder environment for me to learn technique with and that makes it easy because i'm like ah it's not my fault part of this is not my fault <laughs> which is amazing because i'm somebody that is always this is my fault whatever the situation like what have i done what could i do better you know how can i fix this in a way that i have control over and so this is in a sense an easy problem for me because i'm like man i finally got a problem that isn't my fault that i don't have to go deep soul searching to fix i can just chip away at this and hopefully my voice will come back i wouldn't say my voice is fully returned at the moment i would say i've got super flexibility on certain sounds right now but in the mid range on like medium compression not really mid range like into head voice around second bridge on medium compression i'm working a little bit harder than i would like at the minute but outside of that particular context i've got loads and loads of flexibility and just this easy feeling that i had uh when i got to that baseline in january and i also had uh one day about four or five days ago where i had that same experience i do have some problems with thinning out beyond the third bridge it's a little bit f fuzzy at the minute but it's starting to come at certain times of the day i'm noticing ah, okay that's starting to thin out without any any hiss at all so i can feel it gradually day by day trending in the right direction and it's not getting worse when i wake up in the morning i'm not feeling these giant swings where i wake up and my voice is just super stiff which is what my normal was for for many many years i'd go for like three or four days where i'd start to feel like ah oh, this is feeling better back down big crash again never knowing why now my voice sorry my diet has been kind of close to what it is now but i was eating loads and loads of acidic fruit just before bed going to bed waking up with the same issue i was also eating very a very big meal at, at lunch time i've cut all that out now so i'm eating small portions lots more meals throughout the day but smaller meals i'm eating soups as i said vegetables just basically vegetables and stock i'm having banana melon and apples and largely that's it at the moment i'm trying to get back to can i get to a baseline where my voice feels not inflamed consistently let's say for a month or two months and then then see what i can gradually add back in and and then adjust from that point i've got to try and get to a baseline at the minute i'm going to be back singing and performing but i've got to fix this problem and this is basically a diary of 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 what i'm going through at the minute but i i'm putting it up on this channel as a 
just as a this is going to be useful for somebody out there who is trying to figure out why is singing hard for me it can be a tricky journey to figure out for most people struggling especially if they're learning as adults it could be for you it's leaning towards technique it could be for you it's leaning towards your health it could be some combination of both the idea is you've got to figure it out for you it may be different to me but you've got to figure out what is holding me back i tell you it will disable your ability to learn it will take you longer to learn to sing it will take you longer to generate confidence and you will never truly be able to let go one thing i've noticed when i'm able to sing on that bass line with no inflammation my ability to totally let go of the technique is like magnified tenfold and that just gets me into this positive loop where i just can't get out of it i can't fail you can't get to that peak of that mountain if you've got this glass ceiling halfway up that is inflammation, that is silent reflux, that is some type of health issue that is stopping this mechanism working properly. Anyway guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I hope this video is useful to somebody out there. Let me know. Outside of that, subscribe, thumbs up, all that good stuff. I'll catch you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye.